This video is about envelopes and also the difference between envelopes and LFOs and it will help you to create a better sound design, to create better kick and basses because there's so much misunderstanding in envelopes and even when I made this video I had a small mistake, it's also so simple to oversee things and once you really dig into the source of envelopes you will get a better understanding of those and you will be more careful and you will make better decisions in your music production. Production. So by the end of this video, you should be the master of envelopes, especially in Serum, and that will help you to really get forward in your music production. So before we dive deeper into envelopes, I want to quickly go about the difference between LFO and envelopes. Basically, both types, the envelopes and the LFOs, you can use to assign them to other knobs to control them. The LFOs are more time-based. We can set a rate here, for example, and it will run through that pattern here with the defined rate. This rate could be something which is here like bars or so BPM-based, or it could be something free, like a free running rate, which is at a hard hertz rate, for example, 1.4, hertz here so if we are increasing here it goes faster so that's basically how an lfo reacts and we will come later a little bit to those trigger and envelope modes here on the other side the envelope is totally midi based it also has timing parameters in here but what's important is here that we always need a midi note to trigger it so this midi note can be something we put into the keyboard but it also can be something we programmed into the daw and a lot of producers get the envelopes wrong. Even I did sometimes not really understand how they exactly work. They seem very simple, but the nitty gritty details is something we often forget about them. So let's start very simple here. Every envelope consists usually of four basic parameters. It's the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release time. And then we have some synthesizers which offer us additional parameters. So for example, we have the hold here then we have a graphical user interface in which we can determine the curves here so they are not determined by the knobs but we can only do them here in the graphical user interface in other synthesizers you can adjust them also with a knob and there's also synthesizers which have additional hold parameters in different sections here for example in Spire there you have a few more options anyway if you understand those four basic parameters you will understand the rest for sure as well and if you haven't subscribed to this channel already then please hit the subscribe button that will help you to not miss any videos so if you turn on the bell notification and the subscribe button you get a notification whenever I release a new video and then you can decide if it's interesting for you and if you want to watch it and if it improves your music production skills so how does this actually work let's go parameter by parameter because that will explain a lot so we have like a lowest point here zero and we have a highest point here which is all the way up up here and the time it takes to go from the lowest point to the highest point is the attack time so in 250 milliseconds which is an eight note here in 120 bpm you can also do basically like this and you will get this 250 milliseconds here it will take that time to travel up to the highest point here then we're holding for another eight note here and then we're traveling down a quarter note so two eight notes one quarter note to the sustain level so the sustain level if that's zero dBs here then this is minus 10 dBs and then we have 500 milliseconds of release to travel down to zero again and now the thing comes which makes most producers get wrong and it's very simple but a lot of people get it wrong it's that this time here all this part of the envelope is triggered when you press the MIDI down so when you press on your keyboard down or if there's a note in your door and all this part only gets triggered once we release the note so once we put our finger off the keyboard and this leads to a lot of confusion among new producers because if you don't know that then you you can easily fall into the trap of having things overlapping where you don't want to have them overlapping. So for example, the last bass note overlaps with your kick. One example, so there are many examples. You can also have this problem between different synths or even in the synthesizer itself, there's some kind of reaction if you have notes overlapping. Anyways, the second thing which people get wrong is if you are having a MIDI note, which is long enough that it travels down to 
zero. It doesn't here. It just stops at the sustain level. So let's imagine we have a very long send node. It rises to the top, it goes here, it travels down, and then stays here until we release it and then the release kicks in and goes like this. So that's the main thing about envelopes I actually want to tell you in this video. And if you just got this, then it's already good. But I want to visualize that a little bit for you. If you got any value out of this video so far, then please hit the thumbs up. That really helps me to develop this channel and to see what you guys like and what not so that I can focus more on the videos you guys enjoy. And by the way, there's one speciality in Serum and actually it's in a lot of synthesizers uh, mapped like that. There's an automatic mapping from envelope one to the volume of the synthesizer. So you don't need to map this here to the level in order to get this curve. It already is mapped here, by the way, envelope 2 is not mapped to the second oscillator volume. So this is more or less, you could say, the main volume of everything in the synthesizer. Let me visualize that a little bit. So we don't have anything here because we didn't press the MIDI. We have our attack time, which is the yellow one here. Then we have our hold period, which is the green one now. Then we have the DK here, which is this one. And then we have the release, which is like this. And now you can actually see see that when the time here, which is left for the DK, is smaller than this number, that something will happen. And this something what will happen is that we actually start from a higher point and then releasing down. So let me quickly prove this by making this no longer. And now let's put this one on the knees. So now we can see it more properly. This is actually our DK and this is then our release. And we're starting here with the release, always where we kind of like left from the height of wherever we stopped in this curve here. And to make even more visual example, I also want to stop one time here at the highest point so that we don't even have that DK here. Let's duplicate this as well. Well, so this was the one with DK18. This was DK full. And now we will have no DK. Well, let me record this out. So this time our release, as you can see, it's like a full quarter note here, as we have set it up in the synthesizer. But this time it starts here from the highest point. So that's something you really need to digest, that the first three parameters are all connected to holding the MIDI, while the last one is basically once you release it, and it's dependent on where you stopped. And I want to give you even one more example. And this one more example is if we're having a longer one, then you can see that we are basically staying at the sustain level. So it's not decreasing then, it's not going into the release. So let's quickly talk about the cases again. So the last one was, we went up here, we went down here, and then we were holding that MIDI note and we went into the release. This one was, we went up here, we released the note, and then we were falling in that time to zero. So basically we get a steeper curve falling down to zero. This one was that everything had the correct timings basically went up here, we hold it, we went till here and we were falling down. And the first one here we did was that we went up here, we went only to half the point and then we were falling down. So I hope that cleared it a lot up for you guys what an envelope actually does and how it works because that will help you a lot when you, for example, do kick and bass. If you have multiple synthesizers in one section and you notice everything sounds maybe a little bit too blurry, then this could be something which is related to, for example, release times. Maybe you have a cool musical idea, but you're missing the foundation, a strong kick and bass and a strong drum groove which carries your track. So no matter how good your idea is, it will not really come to a maximum level if you're missing the strong foundation. And that's why I created a strong foundation for you, something I would use in my own tracks. And to be honest, I created more than this pack I show here, and I have already used one of those in my own tracks. So it's really how I would do this. I put like full power into those packs, which I will upload here on my uh, BeatStars store. So this is the first one, uh, Samurai H-Harp in 145 BPM. It sounds like this, and you can use it to jumpstart your musical idea you just need to create the leads and the arrangement and you're good to go.
And you're not only getting this wonderful pack, you're also supporting this channel, which is really important for me to create all those free tutorials. That's only possible with you guys. Whenever you buy something in my shop or you register the academy or something else, then you're supporting this channel. So thank you very much for that because that makes all this possible. And we have one mission together to learn as much as we can and to really release good music to make the whole Psytron scene more vibrant, better and create better music together. Together. So now I want to show you what actually happens when notes overlap in the synthesizer. So not between different tracks in your track, for example, like kick and bass, as we have seen, but more if you have two notes playing after each other. So I prepared this scenario quickly here. So I put the envelope now to attack zero full length. Uh, we don't have any randomization here. We don't have any face here. So we're starting exactly here and we have one note. And you can see it's exactly starting here at zero, like this. Once we put a second note here, you can see that it doesn't start at zero anymore. And this phenomenon is called voice stealing. Dash Glitch made a really cool video about this, about voice stealing in basses. But what you need to know is that this doesn't start here at zero for the reason to connect those two synthesizer waves. So basically we have, as you can see, one wave going here. Maybe it's, I don't know how it works behind the scenes, but I guess it's something like that it's putting like a starting point and bends the curve somehow here or maybe sums it in a way. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is that you don't get the cleanness you might want to have here in your note. A quick tip for that, because when I do my basses, I do basically this. Not only that I'm shortening the notes, but once I bounce them to audio, I do this. Instead of having this, I will do this. I will have one note activated. And then I chop it and I just do this, remove the other one and put this in audio. And then you get like complete cleaning starting point. That's so easy actually to fix um, this issue um, without any settings change or changing your sound. Because maybe if you do something more radical to, to cut it here, maybe it's not the sound you want to get in the end. I mean, just saying you can do that and you can put the LFO tool behind, but I think audio is the final and ultimate control for everything in the end. I prepared an another setup for you guys because we want to find out the differences between an envelope and an LFO set to envelope mode. So first of all, I have envelope one here, which controls, as we know, the amplitude here in Serum, set to like maximum straight away, also long hold, also long release, and especially with maximum curve up here, so that we don't get any influence from envelope one on our volume. And I set envelope two to control the level here. And this one important thing, usually Usually this runs through like in the filter effects chain, so it won't be the same. Also, we don't know if there's any scaling in here, like for example, like a logarithmic scaling. But what I do expect is, as this is like a quarter note now, this is also a quarter note, but if we play a note like this, so basically we have a full quarter note, that we get this from the note and this release over here. So let's record this out. And it looks pretty well. We have our release over here and we have our full note over here. Now switch to the second setup. I have a set it to a half note. So we have a quarter note till here and a quarter note till here. So look what happens. We do have the release, which I saw in the beginning when I did this experiment that actually it might even stop here. So at the moment, it looks quite the same. Let's look how it behaves with a longer note. So let's record the first one out again. So we have all the note, the sustain, and then it goes down here. What happens if we put this one in here? It stops earlier. And the reason for that is that the points are not really assigned to MIDI events. So what this LFO basically does, it runs through that curve here. So it looks like no matter what we do, it will run through that whole curve here, like an envelope. So it starts here and stops here, but it's not really assigned to the MIDI event. So we don't have assigned this point here to the note off event. And that's actually the main difference between this LFO to set to envelope and the envelope as an envelope. Anyways, we also have the trigger mode just for the fullness of the explanation here. So this one behaves a little bit different. So it gets triggered by MIDI and then it just runs through once this time is hit. So if we make like a very long note. 
you can see it kind of like restarts after the half note here. So that's the main difference between those two. They're quite similar, but they still have a little bit different use cases. And uh, don't forget that everything is also still mapped to that amplitude envelope because if we would do something like this so that we don't have any release anymore, then we would get something like this once we record. So we have an immediate drop off here because the volume is cut like this. So if you enjoyed this video, I got more Serum tutorials for you guys. So there's a full playlist of videos about Serum, which I will link up here.